Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, a house church network, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. And if you go there to our website, you can learn about house churches. We've got about 10 videos that are question and answer type things. We've got articles about house church. We've got a teaching series about house churches. Uh, also, sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a weekly teaching, not about house church necessarily. In fact, only rarely, but uh, weekly thoughts that come out every Friday by email. Um, sign up for those, and also my monthly e-newsletters. Those are the places, especially the newsletters, that just and one just came out today, as a matter of fact, where I put prophetic things, uh, things that the Lord has told me. Today, if you're watching this uh, July, whatever it is, in 2022, I just put a uh, posting of a recent visitation I had with the Lord, some prophetic things he said. So visit our website, sign up for my weekly thoughts and uh, my e-newsletter. And you can find uh, information about our Zoom meetings, our conferences, web meetings, things of that nature, and where we'll be. So anyway, today, uh, it came into my heart, just when I was asking the Father, it's like, what, what do you want me to talk about? And just to share some of the things that I've learned uh, by different visitations through the years, just little one-liners, little things that give insights into the ways of the Lord. You know, my heart has always been... Uh, in Psalm 103, 7, it says that he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts, A-C-T-S, his acts to the children of Israel. My heart has always been, since I was a teenager, to know his ways, to know the ways like Moses did, knowing that I'm not looking for the, the water out of a rock or the manna in the wilderness or something like that. Uh, you know, people look around for miracles here and there and everything. I want to know the reason behind the reason. And so with that, I share some of the things that uh, the Father had told me and some of the visitation stuff I'll share. Um, <clears throat> one of them, I'll start when I was a teenager, for instance. Um, probably one of my favorite, the, you, you got to remember, my dad had left our family when I was 11 and a half. So when I came to the Lord, it was really the Father that I was after. So the Father ta started talking to me because uh, I started seeking him. He would tell me how to t you know, how to repair the lawnmower, different stuff like that around the house. I was the oldest of four kids. My mom depended on me. Um, so the father and I have always had, a, I don't know, a conversational relationship maybe. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, he told me this. He said, he, just out of the blue one day, he said this. He says, you'll find uh, when you receive your glorified body, it's not subject to the natural laws of the earth. And I, I said, what do you mean? And he said, oh, if you want to walk, you can walk. If you want to run, you can run. If you want to fly, you can fly. If you want to float, you can float. If you want to be somewhere at the speed of thought, you can be there. And I thought, wow, yeah, that's, uh, you know, uh, to have that glorified body, that body that's not subject to the natural laws of the earth, but it's created by heavenly material and subject to the heavenly laws. Uh, what an amazing thing. And I'm sure many of us have said, you know, when I get my glorified body, I want to do this or, or that, you know, fly up into the clouds and sit on a thunderhead. Uh, you know, wrestle with uh, dangerous animals, uh, dive into the depths of the sea, things of that nature. So as a teenager, 16, 17 years old, when the father told me that, it was just like, oh, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to that. Um, further on, later on, when uh, the Lord started appearing to me regularly with visitations after April of 1986, and uh, then I also, um, often accompanying him, was what I would call my guardian angel. And one of the most profound uh, visitations I had early on with him and, and with the Lord when I was able to ask questions, I asked my angel, I said, what do you, how do you view the point that in the ages to come, I'm going to be in charge of you. In the age to come, I will be in charge of you, as the word says. Now we're made a little lower the angels, but in, in the age to come, we'll be in charge of you. And he looked at me like he was horrified. He looked at me and he had this look on his face. Oh, it is right. It is proper. Like, how could I ask such a thing? And I said, I said, why? And he said, remember, we know him as creator, but you know him as savior. And he was very solemn, very solid, very uh, sense of it is right that we are made in charge of them in the age to come because they just know him as creator, but we know him as savior. What an amazing thing. I once asked, I, I, I noticed I was ministering in a church uh, the first time it happened, I was mentioning in church, maybe 60 people or something like that. And there were just as many angels. I assume the people, the guardian angels of the of the people there in the pews, and there were angels just standing around in the aisles and everything else. And they were just listening to what I was teaching. And and I, I said my I said my angel said, Why, you know, why are you doing why do you listen? Why are you why are you here to pay attention to this? And he said, he said, We learn from your perspective. 
the, the, the depths of, of your salvation. And it was just it was really an amazing thing. Uh, another thing early on is I was in a, when I was on staff with a large mega church in Tulsa. And at that time, uh, the church met in a basketball arena. And so the, the platform where the pastor was and the worship team was down on the basketball floor, basically, that was covered over with carpet for the purpose of the service. And then the people sat up in the arena around it. So I'm, I'm up on the second, third, fourth row up a little bit off the floor and so then I'm looking down to where the worship team is and suddenly I saw like 50 or 60 angels and as the worship was was going on these angels were dancing and, and they're they all look like you know men uh, young men and but with the innocence of toddlers it was just amazing and they were dancing and they were doing things like uh, that looked like an American square dance almost you know you come in hands up break out grab your elbows spin around uh, dance around. It looked very similar to that. And some of them were more like an Israeli line dance, you know, shoulders on, you know, an Eastern European thing, you know, shoulders on or arms on shoulders and, and dancing and, and going around. And, and they were just enjoying the worship with, uh, with the word, the people who were in the midst of the worship. And I looked and my angel was just standing there watching. And obviously the father had arranged it so that, you know, I could say something to him. And, and I said, I said, you guys dance. And he turned to me and he looked at me and he said this, that which is given from heaven is enjoyed in both realms. And that just helped me see so much about the divinely inspired songs, the worship songs that are out there. And it set my heart to, to just desire to, to, to discern between the songs which are clearly of the flesh and don't do anything for you of the spirit. They're more horizontal, you know, about my problems and icky me and how the Lord did this and the Lord did that. And now I can jump through a hoop and run over a wall or whatever the case is. And, uh, and then there are those that are vertical that are truly heaven inspired that are just straight worship to him. And, and it helped me. I just, it was an amazing, an amazing thing. Um, oh boy, I, I guess, I, let me share this with you too. I, I hesitate doing this, but I'll, uh, I share this from time to time. Um, I, during visitation uh, with the Lord and everything, then I was able to ask the angel, I said, tell me about your view of, of the father. You know, what, what, what do you think of, of the father? And immediately, boom, we were away and, uh, and we were, I was with him standing about a meter, maybe three, four feet off the ground. And I knew it was somewhere hot. I knew it was somewhere like East Africa, you know, near the Indian ocean. And uh, a man who was speaking a language that I didn't understand. And he was, you know, we were across the road from this, this little house. And this man was saying goodbye to his wife. And he had this cart load that he was carrying by hand. It's like a giant wheelbarrow or something. You know, just a cart with a wheel and, and, and handles and everything. And it was loaded with vegetables from his garden. And he started walking into, obviously, what was a market. And the angel said... So let me show you the goodness of, of your father. And he said this, he said, he said, this man's vegetables, he said the main part of his income is, is from these vegetables. And he has hopes to have, a, to make enough money from the sale of these vegetables to buy some goats so that he can increase financially. But his wife also has desires that she hasn't uh, told him about, but your father knows that she has the desires for some personal things for her, a hairbrush, a comb and a mirror, some personal items. Um, and so we went along and as he went into the market and I'm, I'm kind of keeping this, uh, I don't want to keep this a little shorter. So he went to the market and he went down the length of the market and nobody bought his vegetables. And he got to the end of the market and he turned around looking for a, a vendor, someone in, with the, you know, there were all these carts, all these things. They had fish out there, they had vegetables, they had fruits, they had different things like that for people to buy, but nobody was buying from him. And uh, and then the angel said, now what, now look what your father has done. And as the man started back down, there was a woman who kind of flagged him down and, and called him over and they started talking. And I didn't understand the language. I didn't understand the language when he said goodbye to his wife. I didn't understand the language when they were haggling, but obviously they were haggling over price, but the man ended up emptying his vegetables, uh, with her leaving her vegetables. And he took, started walking back to his house with his empty cart and, and as we're walking, the angels, and, and, and we're again, we're like above the ground just watching this and moving along with him. And 
<clears throat> as he goes along, the father said, your father has been gracious and, and, has, a, and has given him a, a, a prophet. Not only this, will this woman buy his crop from the cart, but she's going to buy all of his, all of his uh, harvest. And your father has arranged it that he'll have enough profit to buy the goats that he wants, and his wife will be able to buy uh, the th personal items that she wants. And when he got back to the house, they started rejoicing. And there was then suddenly the interpretation, I was given the interpretation, and they were praising another God. I won't mention who it was, but they were praising another God. Uh, they're of another religion. And they were assigning to that God the grace and the thankfulness and the appreciation and the praise for getting them the right price, even though I knew it was my Heavenly Father who did that. And when I realized that they were of another religion, that they weren't believers in, in the God of, the, of the, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I turned to my angel and my, I said, my, my father blesses, you know, and I mentioned this religion. And the angel looked at me like confused and he said, he said, your father does, multiple, does these kinds of things multiplied millions of times all over the planet or all over the earth every single day. And I said, this is great. This, this needs to be in, on, on the TV show. I mentioned uh, a t Christian TV show at the time and, and also a Christian magazine at the time. And I said, this needs to be published. This needs to be publicized. People need to know that our father does this multiplied millions of times all over the planet. And, and he does so anonymously, just blessing people. You know, and the angel looked at me with a confused look and he says, your father does things like this multiplied millions of times every day all over the planet. What makes you think these things can be contained in a TV show or a magazine? Only the ages to come will reveal the goodness of your father. And then suddenly, boom, we were back in the living room. And so anyway, that was, uh, that was a life-changing, big-picture expansion of my understanding of the Father God. In the same way Jesus turned water into wine and then he stayed anonymous, he didn't let the steward of the wedding, he let him get the glory and the honor for having brought out the best wine last, and Jesus stayed in the background. And just to understand when Jesus said, I am meek and lowly of heart, learn from me, that experience uh, with the Lord and that angel just, just expanded my understanding of the humility and the and the and uh, just the lowliness of our Lord, the, the, the true desire to make everyone better. And uh, yes, he deserves all glory and honor, don't get me wrong, but just the way he does things in our lives, he doesn't draw attention to it. He doesn't say, hey, look what I did. He stays behind the scenes and he lets the processes continue to work. So anyway, these are just a few of the things. I hope they're a blessing to you. Uh, ran on a little bit. Uh, we'll see if uh, the Lord lets me share some things next week. So anyway, cwowi.org. Uh, House Church Network. Hope you'll visit our website, sign up for my weekly thoughts and my monthly e-newsletter. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.